Good evening, everyone. There are some seats in the front, so if you guys want to just come in, come forward and grab a seat. I promise you I won't hurt you. So once again, good evening everyone, and welcome to the University of Illinois College of Medicine Peoria Celebration of Excellence. My name is Manakshi Ayer, and I serve as the Regional Dean here at the College of Medicine. Um, excellence is truly a culmination of talent, of passion and commitment, and creativity and innovation. And it is this excellence that we are here to celebrate today. Over the course of the evening, you will hear a lot of awards and recognitions that are handed out to our faculty. And uh, you will also hear some community awards. And that is just gives you a glimpse of the talent we have here, of the wonderful faculty who do a great job teaching, and also every day they bring their creativity and innovation to their work to make teaching and learning and training the next generation of physician better. So I have to tell a little story uh, to just show the impact that the learners, in the teachers in this room today, the award winners, the honorees in this room, to, in this space, and those who couldn't be here today, really have um, an impact on generations to come. So as you all know, on September 30th, we celebrated the Golden Gala which was really celebrating 50 years of the first class which graduated in 1973. And we had, it was a very busy weekend. We had things happening on Friday, Saturday. And on Sunday morning, we were at breakfast and there was an alumni in the class of 1979 who walked up to me and said, Menakshi, this is a very special place. Please take care of this place. She said, this place has given me, it has, it's lots of memories and it has really changed my life and helped me serve the community in which I am for the last few decades. So I just want you all to recognize the power and the impact. So this is, she's coming back 40 years later, probably some of her teachers are not in the room, but the impact that all of you have had on these students, learners, residents is very powerful. So I just wanted to take this moment to thank all of you for everything that you do every day. And it's also a moment to um, celebrate. Not only do we celebrate the ripple effect, but I also wanted to take a moment to celebrate the families and friends of all our faculty and who are here today. Because without their support, they cannot do what they do every well. So can we give them a big round of applause? It's so important. <laughs> And I, I also want to say that this is also the moment we celebrate the community, um, the community which really su uh, supports the University of Illinois College of Medicine, Peoria. So to honor and recognize that, we wanted to kick off today's event with the University of Illinois Community Health Award. So the UECOM Community Health Award honors those who promote community health in central Illinois. A healthy community requires a high quality medical system along with programs to confront and manage concerns such as livable neighborhoods, family support, job opportunities, improved educational opportunities, hunger, address hunger, homelessness, and adequate systems of transportation, public safety, and crime. Separate awards of individ for individuals and organizations are considered annually to recognize commitment to community health promotion and or disease prevention. So to present these awards, I would li now like to welcome to the podium Patty Bash to our community health awards. Patty is synonymous with community health advocacy. If anybody in this room doesn't know Patty, I would say they're probably new to Peoria. <laughs> She is a philanthropist and her passion for advocacy and philanthropy here in Peoria is very well known. She has a passion for serving the underserved and that is what led her to her role in founding the Hull Center for Healthy Living, 
as well as her co-founding Loaves and Finches, a food pantry ministry at the First United Methodist Church here in downtown Peoria. In 1999, she received the UECOM Community Health Award, and since that time, she has also been a loyal member of the UECOM Community Health Awards Committee. This evening, we are pleased to be joined by Patty Bash in presenting our 2023 award winners. Well, Pratt, what a wonderful privilege it is for me to be able to present these two awards that I'm going to do tonight because both are so, so well-deserving. The first pr presentation that I'm going to do is to a leader and a community health advocate, and his name is Derek Kimler. Now, I had the privilege today at my United Way meeting to hear Derek present and to say that he is passionate and that he is so... He is so happy to be doing what he's doing, and the applause that followed him certainly indicated that. So Derek serves as an executive director of the Central Illinois Friends. Some people refer to it as CI Friends, and I'm sure you are pretty uh, accomplished in knowing all the things that it does. But it's an organization that helps people living with HIV. Through the years, CI Friends has adapted and grown to be a source of support, resources, advocacy, and community for people living with and affected by HIV in the 16 county region that it covers in central Illinois. So under the direction of Derek Kimler, Friends has evolved into a public health organization offering free services and comprehensive support linking individuals to proper care and providing HIV, hepatitis C, and STI testing anywhere in central Illinois. The University of Illinois College of Medicine values the collaboration and the partnership with CI Friends to expand the knowledge and experience of the students and residents surrounding the social determinants of health. Derek Kimler is a selfless leader who advocates, who advocates for the patients and clients served by his organization. He's a champion for community health and is a valued partner in co collaborating to make Central Illinois a community that is safer and healthier for all. So on behalf of, uh, on behalf of UECOMP and the Community Health Awards Committee, I am privileged to present the 2023 Community Health Award to Derek Kimler. This guy is a great guy. <laughs> he was telling us today that I think his organization grew from two people, and didn't, don't you say you have 27 now? Yep. And now they have a $3.1 million budget, and they do so much in our community and for the medical students and the residents, and I want Derek to spend a few minutes telling you about that, if that's okay. Should I give this first? Oh. Derek, to Thank you, you. <laughs> we are Thank so you. proud of you. Thank you so much. You're so deserving. I don't know if this is to represent the blood, sweat, or tears, but I'm going to pretend it's everything, right? <laughs> so first of all, I know that you know, when you get awards like this, people always say that they're humbled and that they're proud and, it's, and they're happy and excited. And um, I think we all say those things, and I think it goes in one ear and out the other oftentimes. But I can't express as much gratitude as I do for this award and how much this means to me. Because... I, to go back, I'm not going to explain everything Central Illinois Friends does and all the growth we've experienced, but I am going to uh, share and echo what Dr. Ayer was saying about the importance of UE Comp here in Peoria. So as you, you all you know, there's three main campuses, right? Peoria, Rockford, and Chicago. And I'll never forget the first meeting I ever had with Angela O'Brien at our office when we had two employees. <laughs> And I said, I need help. And um, I feel like we could really give some students some hands-on experience, something that they don't get in a lot of different places. And through Angela O'Brien's hard work and efforts 
and our team's hard work and efforts, we started a program to bring med students on board to do two-week rotations and to see what it's like to actually get their hands dirty and work with the community, what preventative health care means, and what it means to go in literally in the streets and provide health care to people who can't afford to go to the hospital or the clinic. And all of a sudden, it has blown up and it has grown, and to a point where not only are we doing two-week med student rotations, we have residents, and, and we actually have physicians that are also getting awarded here at, tonight that are working with Central Illinois Friends to provide free, completely free, no questions asked, healthcare services. And in return, that's, that's education to students that would not get the, the hands-on education they would receive in other places and spaces. Uh, and in other schools and universities throughout the United States. That is the importance of, 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 of community health because they're getting experience that no others do. Now with that, I want to honor some of these individuals in the room because I know I see Phoebe Mihalovich, I see Angela O'Brien, I see my mentor and partner in crime, Andrea Parker, and, and I, I, can't have, I could not have done any of this without any of them, as well as my fiance, uh, Frederick Hartville right here, and Becca Mathis, who has come on board and has become our director of clinical services and has really taken the lead on our clinical side to make sure these students have not just a hands-on experience, but an experience that they can take with them. So with this, I will not drop the mantle. I will stand on the shoulders that I, that the, the, the very broad and wide and strong sh sh shoulders of those who were awarded past, and I will stand strong for all those who will come after. So thank you so, so much. Thank you. And next I get to present an award to Easter Seals. As you know, Easter Seals has had a rich history that includes a record of success for more than a century of serving children with disabilities and their families, and they provide a broad-based community support, support. And that was uh, what was noted by our committee when we were voting on these um, candidates and then the winners. Easter Seals' dedication to not only children with disabilities, but also those with developmental delays or other special needs provide an essential service to our community. And their most recent launch of the Autism Collective was cited as an example of identifying and addressing critical needs and create creatively finding a solution to fill in that gap. And I'm so proud of them for what they've been doing. All of healthcare rose to the occasion, of course, during COVID-19, and Easter Seals was no exception to that. They cast their net wider in promoting uh, child development and fortified resources for families and other care providers by ramping up their website resources. One example that they did was they had a video that uh, showcased large motor activities, and that was viewed over 31,000 times. Their staff also hosted virtual trainings and webinars for families and professionals nationwide, actually. Another shiny example of their support is something that I've just learned about in the last few years, and that's Timber Point Outdoor Center. It's a 170-acre outdoor education center that is an exclusive and specialized camp that offers both overnight and day campus for a diverse population, including both children and adults. So indeed, Easter Seals has been a tremendous asset to the community health of Central Illinois and we're grateful for their steadfast commitment to serving the children of Central Illinois. And we are now honored to present Easter Seals, their representative with the 2023 Community Health Award. Hello everyone, I'm Melissa Riddle. I'm the President and CEO of Easter Seals Central Illinois. It is my honor to accept the University of Illinois College of Medicine Peoria 2023 Community Health Award on behalf of Easter Seals Central Illinois. For more than a century, Easter Seals has been able to meet the needs of our community thanks to the generosity and expertise of the medical prof professionals practicing and learning right here in Greater Peoria. I am grateful for our team at Easter Seals Central Illinois and our community partners. 
We are proud to be a part of a community that is committed to working alongside each other to, pro to provide a continuum of care to the residents of Central Illinois and beyond. With heartfelt appreciation, thank you, University of Illinois College of Medicine, Peoria, for all you do and thank you for allowing Easter Seals Central Illinois to be the recipient of this year's Community Health Award. Thank you. So I would now like to welcome to the podium Dr. Jessica Hanks, the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, who's been doing a remarkable job in leading the educational efforts of the College of Madison Peoria. Dr. Hanks. Thank you, Dina Year. Good evening, everyone. I will serve as your MC for the remainder of the night. Um, to get us started, I wanted to um, really just take a moment to acknowledge and celebrate our faculty in their curricular research and service endeavors, truly the pillars of academic medicine. To educate, advise, and support our students throughout their four years takes a community. I would like to take a few moments to acknowledge the faculty present um, tonight in these various roles. Within phase one of the Illinois Medicine Curriculum courses, our basic and clinical science faculty collaborate across the college and locally for the development, implementation, and assessment of our phase one courses. In addition, as part of our DOCS course, we have partnered with many clinicians in the surrounding communities to provide early longitudinal immersion interprofessional team experience, or elite as we commonly call it. These providers have M1 and M2 students in their clinics throughout phase one and are integral in the curriculum and they ask where they apply both the basic and clinical sciences that they learn throughout the curriculum. This is the first clinical experience in career exploration within our students' medical school journey. I would like the phase one course directors, themes and sub-theme leaders, and elite preceptors present tonight to please stand and be acknowledged. Thank you for your service to the college. As students are navigating the foundational curricular requirements of phase one, we also recognize and support their personal and professional development. Our clinical faculty advisors serve in this role by working with students in the curriculum and also by meeting with them individually and really serving as a mentor during their M1 and M2 year. This advising builds upon the exposure within the curriculum to different domains within the field of medicine. Clinical faculty advisors tonight who are present, please stand and be acknowledged. Please join me in a round of applause. And finally, I would like to recognize the phase two clerkship directors and the phase three sub-internship directors that are present tonight. Please stand. These faculty play an important role in the acculturation of students to clinical medicine. They build a foundation for their future careers and prepare them for residency. Benjamin Franklin said, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. This summarizes the experience of learners and how integral our community of faculty and the community of Peoria are in shaping our future positions. Now, the students would like to honor faculty with a token of appreciation for their invaluable contributions during phase one. Students nominate faculty in both the basic and clinical sciences in each block that exemplify excellence in teaching. I invite Diego Reyes Avila and Lamisha Tabri, our M2 Student Curricular Board representatives, to the podium to announce the awardees. We will call forward both the basic and clinical science faculty together for each course to get their certificate and picture with Dean Iyer. Please hold your applause until the end. Awardees are acknowledged. Diego and Lamisha, please come forward. As part of Block 1, Dr. Richard Tapping and Dr. Tammy Connor Garcia. Dr. Richard Tapping, Clinical Professor, Department of Health Science Education and Pathology, 
Students noted, Dr. Tapping is clearly passionate and did an amazing job helping us through difficult topics. Thank you, Dr. Tapping, for explaining these difficult concepts so well. Dr. Carna Garcia, Clinical Assistant Professor, Department of Health Science Education and Pathology. Students noted, Dr. Carne Connor Garcia is very thought-provoking and engaging. Thank you, Dr. Carna Garcia. Block two, Dr. David Pinson and Dr. Douglas Casper. Dr. Pinson, Professor of Clinical Pathology, Department of Health Science, Education, and Pathology. Students noted, Dr. Pinson made this, these lectures very interactive and enjoyable, and I learned quite a bit from him. Dr. Casper, Associate Professor of Clinical Medicine, Department of Inter Internal Medicine. Students noted, Dr. Casper is amazing. He is a great educator and emphasizes the high yield information that we should focus on. <laughs> Block three, Dr. Jonathan Fisher and Dr. Joshua Kentosh. Dr. Fisher, clinical associate professor, Department of Health Science, Education, and Pathology. And students noted, it is really beneficial to have Dr. Fisher walk us through the histology slide before going into it ourselves. He's very receptive to feedback and incorporates it into his sessions. Dr. Kentosh, Clinical Assistant Professor, Department of Dermatology. Dr. Kentosh did well in describing the testable presentation of each subject and the possible variances that are seen in clinic. He is an amazing professor. Block four, Dr. Ayula Awashika and Dr. Tembi Connor Garcia. Dr. Awashika, visiting clinical associate professor, Department of Health Science Education and Pathology. Dr. Awashika is a great instructor. He comes well prepared with his own notes and explains all the difficult concepts in a great and comprehensible detail. And Dr. Connor Garcia, clinical assistant professor, Department of Health Science Education and Pathology. Dr. Carnegie Garcia gave amazing examples and tied in a lot of concepts over the week for students to learn from. And then we'll go with Black Five, Dr. Manzarul Roney and Dr. Gordon James. Dr. Roney, Clinical Associate Professor, Department of Health, Science Education and Pathology. Students noted, Dr. Roney did a very good job at highlighting the key points and helped alleviate our stress. Love how he draws things out to support his explanation. Dr. James, clinical assistant professor, in the Department of Internal Medicine. Doc, uh, students noted, Dr. James does a great job in teaching this very complex topic and breaking down how we should be thinking about these questions. Thank you to both of you guys. <laughs> Black Six. Dr. Manzaro Roney and Dr. Elsa Vasquez Melendez. Dr. Roney, Clinical Associate Professor, Department of Health Science and Pathology Education and Pathology. Students known as um, elective presentations with supplementary questions in a very good format for the pharmacology lectures. Dr. Vasquez Melendez, Associate Professor of Clinical Medicine and Pediatrics, Department of Internal Medicine. Students noted, Dr. Vasquez Melendez always does a good job of pointing out unfair assumptions that we make and isn't afraid to use herself as, as examples sometimes. I have a lot of respect for that. Thank you. In Block 7, Dr. Jenna Regan and Dr. Amy Christensen. Dr. Regan, Clinical Associate Professor, Department of Health Science Education and Pathology. Students noted Dr. Regan had a lot of great information and taught us very well. Her lecture and lecture slides are always great to go over even after the lecture to study. And Dr. Christensen, Associate Professor, Department of Pediatrics. Students noted Dr. Christensen is wonderful at making HCS concepts practical and easy to understand, especially through her use of personal examples. Thank you. And finally, for our docs course, Dr. Manisha Thoreau, and for, for docs one, phase one, and then docs two for phase two, Dr. James, um, Dr. James Gromlich. Dr. Thoreau, I'm clinical instructor, Department of Internal Medicine. Students noted, we greatly appreciated Dr. Thoreau as our preceptor, not only for her instruction of us teaching physical exams, but her perspective as a physician. 
And then Dr. Gromlich, Professor, Department of Internal Medicine. Students noted, Dr. Gromlich is a wonderful pre preceptor who really went out of his way to ensure that we learn clinical skills with the proper technique. He gave great feedback when observing our patient encounters, and I continue to implement his advice. Thank you. Thank you, Diego and Lamisha. Um, please offer one more round of applause for these excellent educators. Each year, the medical student classes select one faculty member who exemplifies excellence in teaching for their class and their academic um, study. I now welcome Dina Nashid and David Shee, both with the class of 2024, our Peoria Medical Student Council leadership, to the podium to recognize the Golden Apple winners. Faculty, please come forward once your name has been called, and we'll hold the applause after you come up. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So first to start, Dr. Sherry Young was selected for the M1 year by the class of 2026. Students noted, Dr. Young is always there for her students. She has office hours, but goes above and beyond with meeting outside of her hours and explaining things. She is by far one of the most energetic professors. She also goes out of her way to help us. She is the best. And I remember from when I had Dr. Young, she always had the funny mnemonics that will always help us remember every little detail that we had to learn. So thank you, Dr. Young. <laughs> Dr. Sarah Bach was selected for the M2 year by the class of 2025. Students noted, Dr. Bach finds creative ways to teach. It immerses us in the material and makes us want to learn. She makes the information sticks and keeps us engaged from start to end. Thank you, Dr. Bach. Hi, everybody. I'm David. Uh, it's an honor to be here to present these awards to some of these personal mentors of mine. Um, for the Golden Apple Award for selected by the M3 class of 2024, Dr. Julia Spinella. Students have noted that Dr. Bonello lights up every room with his wit, personality, and pedagogic style that always includes a history of, of whatever we're learning. Surgery rotations were challenging, but I looked forward to every interaction with him. But most importantly, he cared for us students as individuals first and inspired us to become good human beings as we tread on our journeys to becoming physicians. Thank you, Dr. Bonello. And selected by the M4 class of 2023, Dr. Manajyoti Yadav was, uh, students noted that Dr. Yadav exemplified what it means to be a great physician, teacher, and mentor. These attributes combined with his authentic care for the students he mentored makes him a favorite of students. Thank you, Dr. Yadav. Thank you, Dina and David. These are some of the highest awards that we can give our faculty, and it's so great to be able to see that our students honor the faculty in this way. The following faculty were nominated by their department for the Phase 2 and 3 Teaching Excellence Award for their contributions to the advancement of the educational mission of their department. As your name is called, please come forward, and Dina here will give you a certificate and um, have a photo. The Department of Family and Community Medicine Clerkship Teaching Excellence Award is awarded to Dr. Dominique Fons, Clinical Assistant Professor, Department of Family and Community Medicine. Students noted, Dr. Fons is a great gift for teaching. Not only does she give students the opportunity to be involved in every aspect of the patient's care, but she uses every opportunity to teach students at a level they can understand and gives great feedback. Congratulations, Dr. Fons. For the Teaching Excellence Award in the Family and Community Medicine Sub-Internship, the department chose Dr. Kelvin Wynn, Associate Professor of Clinical Family Medicine in the Department of Family and Community Medicine. Students noted Dr. Wynn is consistently recognized by students for his teaching abilities during the sub -I, for his compassion and patience. He encourages student autonomy and challenges them to take on increased responsibility. Congratulations, Dr. Wynn.
For the Teaching Excellence Award in the Rural Student Physician Program, the Department of Community and Family Medicine recognizes Dr. Alyssa Crawford, Clinical Assistant Professor in the Department of Obstetrics, Obstetrics and Gynecology. Dr. Crawford has been an incredible teacher since the day that I met her. She greeted me with a package of printed files for us to, to review and a topic during each session that I am with her and she has done that since. Every day in the OBGYN clinic, she's incredible for learning and it's an incredible day to be with her. Thank you, Dr. Alyssa Crawford. Dr. Nina Clegg Johnson, Assistant Professor of Clinical Medicine, receives the Teaching Excellence Award for the Internal Medicine Clerkship. Students noted Dr. Clegg Johnson is both a fantastic physician and teacher when providing care to patients. She created an environment in which patients feel comfortable asking questions and sharing their feelings. She serves as a wonderful example as to how I would like to interact with my patients in the future. Congratulations, Dr. Clegg Johnson. For the Teaching Excellence Award in the Internal Medicine Sub-Internship, the Department of Medicine chooses Dr. Jared Meeker, Clinical Assistant Professor of Internal Medicine. Students noted, I really enjoyed working with Dr. Meeker as a senior med student. I really enjoyed the pulmonology topics we discussed prior to or just after rounds. And I felt at ease that I could ask any topic freely and have an in-depth discussion on various disease pathology or management. Overall, I left the rotation feeling well prepared moving forward to entering year. Congratulations, Dr. Meeker. <laughs> the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology recognizes Dr. Anton Karufe, Clinical Assistant Professor of OBGYN for Excellence in Teaching within the OBGYN clerkship. Students noted Dr. Karufe was a fantastic attendee. He was always eager to teach and frequently went above and beyond to answer student questions. He is a role model for excellent patient care with his compassionate and understanding bedside manner. Congratulations, Dr. Karufe. <laughs> for the Teaching Excellence in the Obstetrics and Gynecology Sub-Internship, the department chooses Dr. Daniel Chan, Clinical Assistant Professor of OBGYN. Students noted Dr. Chan, an excellent clinician and surgeon. He encouraged me to be more involved in the case which made me feel more capable. He cared about teaching me and practiced an ethically conscious medicine, which I respected very much. Congratulations, Dr. Chan. <laughs> the Department of Pediatrics would like to recognize Dr. Umair Iqbal, Assistant Professor of Clinical Pediatrics, for his contributions to medical student education within their clerkship. Students noted Dr. Iqbal is a wonderful pediatrician who advocates for both his patients and his learners. He has a passion for medical student education and demonstrates excellence in bedside teaching. Students love working with Dr. Iqbal and we thank him for his education to training future physicians in the care of children. Congratulations, Dr. Iqbal. The Department of Pediatrics has chosen Dr. Jessica Ford Davis, Assistant Professor of Clinical Pediatrics, for her teaching excellence in the M4 sub internship. Students noted she is a dedicated teacher who ensures that each team member actively participates in all her teaching experiences. Additionally, she strongly advocates for her students' wellness. Congratulations, Dr. Ford Davis. The psychiatry department has recognized Dr. Thomas Boyd, assistant professor of clinical psychiatry for his teaching excellence in the M3 clerkship. Students noted he creates a positive learning environment, encourages questions. He made me feel really included as part of the medical team, listening diligently when I presented patients and asked for my assessment and plan. An amazing physician. Congratulations, Dr. Boyd. The Department of Surgery recognizes Dr. Julius Spinello, Professor Emeritus of Clinical Surgery, for his teaching excellence in the M3 clerkship. Dr. Bonello really connects with the students and is noted to be down to earth and approachable. He consistently shares his time and vast knowledge of surgical history with the third year students, much to their delight and benefit. Congratulations, Dr. Bonello.
The Department of Surgery has chosen Dr. Robin Alley, Clinical Associate Professor, for her teaching excellence in the M4 sub-internship. Dr. Alley is very dedicated to both residents and students, and she encourages through the Department of Surgery, notably through the students she precepts on the surgery sub -I. Students appreciate her amiable manner, her focus on important issues, and the valuable insight her experience offers. Congratulations, Dr. Alley. <laughs> Residents play a critical role in teaching, mentoring, and advising students during their clerkship and their rotations. All of us can distinctly remember the residents who we wanted to emulate. Commonly, they are one of the reasons why we chose the field of medicine that we went to practice. The Resident Excellence in Medical Student Education Award acknowledges residents within our departments that support core M3 clerkships who display excellence in medical student education, providing a safe learning environment that fosters growth or mentoring of a student in the field of medicine. As your name is called, please come forward and accept your award. The 2023 Resident of the Year, as selected by the class of 2023, was Dr. Scott Painter in the Department of Surgery. Students noted Dr. Painter is an excellent teacher and creates a non-threatening, enthusiastic learning environment. He will make a wonderful attending, and I feel very lucky to have worked with him before he moved on. Congratulations, Dr. Painter. <laughs> Dr. Frank DeSilvio, Department of Surgery. Students noted Dr. DeSilvio is an outstanding physician mentor, and I feel lucky to have had the chance to work with him. His enthusiasm for surgery is contagious, and he always took the time to teach. He has served as an incredible role model. Congratulations, Dr. DeSilvio. <laughs> Dr. Farah Gaston, Department of Internal Medicine. Dr. Gaston is one of the best residents to work with. She is truly an advocate for students, and she helped me immensely throughout my time working with her. Congratulations, Dr. Gaston. Dr. Holly McMasters, Department of Pediatrics. Students noted Dr. McMasters was very kind and welcoming and made me feel included as part of the medical team. Congratulations, Dr. McMasters. <laughs> Dr. Courtney Schill, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Students noted Dr. Schill was a great about taking time to allow me to present pages and teach. She is very supportive in the clinical environment. Congratulations, Dr. Schill. <laughs> Dr. Elizabeth Edwards in the Department of Psychiatry. Students noted, I thought Dr. Edwards was a great educator. She always took extra time between patients to answer questions and point out observations from the prior encounter. Congratulations, Dr. Edwards. Dr. Elena Patel, Department of Family and Community Medicine. Dr. Patel was an excellent educator on MNPS. She made sure students had the opportunity to participate in all aspects of the service and gave specific and effective feedback. Congratulations, Dr. Patel. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Charlotte, Department of Neurology. Students noted Dr. Chalette was a pleasure to work with. He always made an effort to make sure we understood what was happening and next steps in patient care. I am very excited for his future as an attending. Congratulations, Dr. Chalette. Please take a moment the next time you see these residents. They're probably mostly working right now uh, when you see them in the clinical setting. These are our future clinician educators, and they are the future of medicine. So congratulations to all of them. Next, we have the Curriculum Innovation Award. This is an award that we do not give out every celebration of excellence. It really takes um, effort and um, dedication by the faculty to innovate within our curriculum. So um, this year, the award um, was really, um, I'm honored and thrilled to present it to Dr. Mary Staple, Clinical Assistant Professor in MedPeds, and Ms. Angela O'Brien, Clinical Associate in the Department of Health Science, Education, and Pathology. They serve as co-course directors for the Urban Medicine Program. This program is a scholarly concentration program for our students on our campus. The focus of the curriculum will be taking a deeper dive into um, health equity, social determinants of health within our urban community, 
um, and really trying to mentor the students throughout all four years. They have developed this program, um, and we had offer, offered our first inaugural class this fall with the class of 2027. Um, and they have a great program coordinator, Erica Litzy, as well, to help build the curriculum. Please give a round of applause for this wonderful innovation. Next, we have the Outstanding Medical Student Advisor Award. The dedication to our students, personal and professional development by our student affairs team and faculty are critical for student success throughout their journey in undergraduate medical education. The criteria for this award include creates a welcoming atmosphere for students, outstanding communication and interpersonal skills, dedication to student success, readily available for meetings and advising, and providing effective advising for the students' needs. Ms. Elizabeth Kellington, Director of Academic Advising, was chosen by the student body as she embodies all of these criteria and more and is and so excellent in her dedication to the students. Congratulations, Liz. Next is our Outstanding Senior Scholar Award. The Senior Scholars Program was established about 10 years ago, and it provides a network of collaboration among experienced physicians, educators, and UE Comp students. The collaboration ultimately enriches the UE Comp learning environment and allows us to glean from the tremendous clinical knowledge, skills, and experience for our senior, retired faculty, and allow these rich experiences to benefit current learners. Dr. Roger Geis is Professor Emeritus of the Department of Health Science, Education, and Pathology at UE Comp and has been a servant leader to the senior scholars, including his most recent role as chair. Dr. Geis is a former recipient of both Outstanding Teaching Award and the Outstanding Service Award at UE Comp, and we appreciate his continued support for our campus. Dr. Geis, congratulations on your recognition as Outstanding Senior Scholar, and thank you for your leadership of senior scholars and your ongoing passion for medical student education. Thank you, Dr. Geis. Our next presentation will be for the Outstanding Faculty Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Award. I welcome Dr. Kelvin Wynn, Associate Professor of Clinical Family Medicine, co-chair of the committee, to present this award. Good evening, congratulations to all the recipients. Um, I'm pleased to um, actually recognize the uh, two um, uh, faculty who have um, actually embodied and exemplified uh, the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion on behalf of our, our DEI uh, committee. They've done this by recognizing the differences between uh, people and uh, valuing those differences as an asset really advocating uh, for fairness and justice for everyone, and then also in terms of cultivating, um, actually supporting and valuing a, a work culture that allows individuals in our campus to be their authentic selves and be able to participate in, in all aspects of their life. And so the uh, first person when I uh, call you up would be uh, from the Department of Pediatrics, Dr. Harlina Kendari. So Dr. Kendari's uh, uh, quote here is, uh, is, Dr. Kendari is a caring and compassionate pediatrician and a passionate advocate for women in academic medicine. Through her hard work and dedication, she has supported and helped the careers of several women in academic medicine, both within our institution and nationally. Congratulations, Dr. Kendari. <laughs> Our next faculty who's uh, outstanding in, in the area of DI would be Angela O'Brien. Quote from a colleague, Ms. O'Brien continues to be innovative, passionate, and a leader in creating and delivering curriculum that is inclusive. Her passion and pursuit of new opportunities within our community for UE Comp is refreshing. Congratulations, Angela. Thank you, Dr. Wynn. Next, we'll um, ask Dr. Jenna Reagan, Chair of the Faculty Awards Committee, to come up to present the Faculty Awards. All right. It is my pleasure and honor to present um, the Faculty Awards this evening on behalf of the Faculty Awards Committee. 
And so we'll start by recognizing um, our awardees for the Outstanding Service Award, beginning with Dr. Sarah Donahue from Research Services. So a colleague has said that Dr. Donahue has invaluable service to UICOMP to help advance the research and social accountability mission. She's a great teacher and works tirelessly to ensure that learners are supported in their pursuit of scholarship. She's a true asset to this institution. Congratulations, Dr. Donahue. <laughs> Next, we'd like to recognize Dr. Eric Elwood from the Department of Surgery, um, also a recipient for the Outstanding Service Award. Dr. Elwood runs a very busy clinical practice while continuing to involve residents and students in the care of adult and pediatric plastic surgery patients. He's, he has displayed dedication to his department, college, and community by serving in many capacities and by his extensive involvement in clinical and educational committees. Even though he has a large volume of commitments, he is a passionate and encouraging mentor. And that was a quote from a colleague of Dr. Elwood's. So please join me in congratulating Dr. Elwood. Also receiving the Outstanding Service Award is Dr. Krishna Kumar Virabali from the Department of Cancer Biology and Pharmacology. A colleague says that in addition to executing federally funded outstanding research, as well as teaching and mentoring the MD students, Dr. Virabali's extensive service for over 12 years to the department, the college, the university, and his profession at the national and international level is exceptional. Congratulations, Dr. Virabali. Next, we'd like to recognize the recipients of the Outstanding Teaching Award, it's beginning with Dr. Tembi Connor Garcia from the Department of Health Sciences, Education, and Pathology. A colleague said that Dr. Gar Connor Garcia has an impact on our learners' medical education that extends outside of the classroom. This impact on the students, both in and out of the classroom, contributes to the ripple effect, where learners will go on to affect others' lives positively due to their interaction. Congratulations, Dr. Connor Garcia. Also being recognized with Outstanding Teaching Award is Dr. Bhavana Kanakatu from the Department of Pediatrics. A colleague says that Dr. Kanakatu understands the important role academic physicians have in training future physicians, as well as the value this brings back to patient care and our community. She's a caring and compassionate human being who genuinely cares, not only about her patients, but also her colleagues, nurses, and staff. Congratulations, Dr. Kanakatu. <laughs> also receiving the Outstanding Teaching Award is Dr. Mansiata Yadav from the Department of Medicine. Dr. Yadav is one of the best attendings I've worked with, says a student. He does a great job balancing patient care, teaching, and delivering feedback. Most importantly, he's an excellent team player and creates a friendly, productive environment for his students and residents. Congratulations, Dr. Digidov. Our next set of awards go out to recognize faculty who have excelled in teaching and service as a community-based faculty award. And so our first awardee is Dr. Gordon James from the Department of Medicine. A colleague said that Dr. James is an amazing physician ex educator. He explains everything very well, and he, oops, sorry, that was, this is actually a quote from a student. Dr. James is an amazing physician educator. He explains everything very well, and he clearly enjoys it. And a colleague adds, for a full-time clinician, he takes the time to be available to our learners in a way that few others do, and he does it with excellence. Congratulations, Dr. James. Our next clinical-based faculty, or community-based faculty, um, receiving recognition for outstanding teaching and service is Dr. Anthony Monaco from the Department of Surgery. A student says that Dr. Monaco might be one of the kindest and most patient attendings that I've ever worked with. He took the time to teach me both in the OR and clinic. He takes on the preceptor and clerkship director roles very well, and he cares about our education. Congratulations, Dr. Monaco. Also recognized for outstanding teaching and service for community-based faculty is Dr. Michael Veter from the Department of Medicine. 
Dr. Feeder has often been identified as one of our best subspecialty clinical educators by our residents in training. To be as influential as he has been with our trainees, the medical literature, and the broader central Illinois region of patients is unarguably superb. That was a quote from a colleague. Congratulations to Dr. Feeder. And finally, I will round out the slate of faculty awards by presenting uh, the top award that faculty receive through the peer nomination process each year, which is the Faculty of the Year Award. And so this year, Dr. Sarab Bansal excuse me, uh, is being recognized as uh, the UI Comp Faculty of the Year. Colleague says that the great majority of Dr. Bansal's scholarly work has been done alongside trainees and co-faculty. The footprint he is leaving on the academic output of the school, the department, and the region is substantial. The student adds that Dr. Bansell is a great advocate for education. He listens well, always makes himself available, and makes it comfortable to communicate whenever anyone has questions. Congratulations, Dr. Bansell. The last category of awards for the evening today is really about promotions and appointments. And for those who have gone through the promotion packet, you know, just for the fact that you completed a promotion packet, everybody should get an award. And then on top of it, it takes a year, so just for people from the community, from the time you submit your package for promotion, it is reviewed by the local committee, the Peoria Campus Committee, then it goes to the College Committee, the UIC Committee, and by the time the, they get approval by the Board of Trustees, it takes a year. So I really think that it is a well-earned recognition for all these promotions. So uh, I think they all deserve a huge round of applause even before we start. So. <laughs> So I'm going to call out the names, and if you're here, you can stand and walk over to get your certificate. Um, so first is Dr. Cecilia Albero, who is promoted to Associate Professor of Clinical Pediatrics. <laughs> Dr. Albero is such a role model. She cares for the whole patient and has an incredible bedside manner and lets time, never lets time get in the way of providing great care. She always asked me what I wanted to improve and was very patient while helping me. This is a quote from the resident. The next promotion is for Dr. Amira Alphil. She was promoted to uh, Associate Professor of P uh, Clinical Pediatrics. Um, the next uh, promotion is Mohammed al Mujahed. He was promoted as Associate Professor of Clinical Medicine. The next we have Dr. Ashley Fisher in the Department of Pediatrics, who was promoted to Associate Professor of Clinical Pediatrics. The next, Dr. Jonathan Fisher in the Department of Health Science, Education and Pathology, who was promoted to Clinical Associate Professor. A student noted, Dr. Fisher is an engaging instructor and very personable with us students, both in and outside of the classroom. His coverage of material was very thorough and clear to understand. Congratulations. The next promotion was for Dr. William Fries in the Department of Pediatrics. He was uh, promoted to Associate Professor of Clinical Pediatrics. Next, we have Dr. Keith Hansen in the Department of Pediatrics, promoted to Associate Professor of Clinical Pediatrics. Dr. Hansen is great at balancing teaching with service and leaving the team enough time to complete their to-do list. He always pushes residents towards or allows residents to make decisions whenever safe. It was nice actually being involved in patient care. This is a quote from our residents. So congratulations. The next uh, promotion is for Dr. Nikhil Kalva in the Department of Medicine. He was promoted to Clinical Associate Professor. The next is Dr. Manasa Kundula, 
promoted to clinical associate professor in the Department of Medicine. Dr. Kundula is an excellent educator with a great fund of knowledge, which she effectively teaches and shares. She is very helpful for daily tasks, extremely organized and thorough, which makes the day flow very well. This was a quote from one of her learners. Congratulations, Dr. Kundula. The next is Dr. Rong Chun Lin in the Department of Medicine, Section of Infectious Disease, promoted to Associate Professor of Clinical Medicine. A student noted, I appreciate Dr. Lin making the rotation as educational as possible. He's a role model physician and cares about the well-being of his patients. Congratulations. The next, um, Dr. Joseph Mackey in the Department of Medicine and Pediatrics was promoted as Associate Professor of Clinical Pediatrics and Associate Professor of Clinical Medicine. Um, next, Dr. Nersesian in the Department of Neurology, promoted to Clinical Associate Professor. Dr. Nersesian continuously provides excellent teaching and mentoring of students and residents. He pushes all learners to be the best that can be. His passion and demand for excellence is appreciated and honored by all who he has taught. Congratulations and thank you. <laughs> Dr. Susan Ramiro in the Department of Pediatrics was promoted to Associate Professor of Clinical Pediatrics. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Roberts, Department of Pediatrics, Promoted to Associate Professor CT, this is the tenure track in pediatrics, and also Associate Professor in Medicine. Dr. Roberts is a phenomenal hematologist and all-around great clinician. I really appreciate his willingness to go above and beyond in many capacities, from checking in to see how we are doing outside the clinical settings to providing us with useful resources. This was a quote from his learner. So thank you and congratulations, Dr. Roberts. Dr. Monzuro Roni in the Department of Health Science, Education, and Pathology was promoted to clinical associate professor. Dr. Roni is a great teacher. He always breaks down concepts, making them easier to grasp. All of the visual aids and interactive questions are so helpful. I always remember what he teaches. Congratulations. Dr. Elias Samaha in the Department of Neurology was promoted to Clinical Associate Professor. The next we have Dr. Nadia Sheikh in the Department of Pediatrics promoted to Associate Professor of Clinical Pediatrics. Dr. Sheikh is smart and organized. She teaches by examples, always thinking critically and encouraging us to understand the differentials, workup, and pathophysiology. She's easy to work with and consistently shows interest in resident wellness and learning. Congratulations, Dr. Sheikh. <laughs> Dr. Tracy Solstice in the Department of Health Science, Education, and Pathology, appointment as clinical professor. Dr. Solstice is amazing. She is very knowledgeable and always thoroughly explains each detail. I loved her lectures and got a lot out of them. This was a quote from a student. Thank you, Dr. Stoltzitz, and congratulations. <laughs> and last but not least, promotion um, for this year was Dr. Sherry Young in the Department of Health Science, Education, and Pathology, who got the appointment as clinical professor. So can we give all these appointments and promotions <laughs> the last set of awards this year, um, I would like people to stand up and be recognized, is the Service Award. This is something that has been offered by the university for the years of service that the faculty provide, and we chose this year to recognize in this celebration of excellence the years and commitment that faculty have towards UECOM. So I'm going to read out the names. If you're here, stand up. And then as you, when you're all, when the program is done, at the back there are these little goodie bags 
for the years of service, so please grab one as you are leaving. So for five years of service, uh, we have Dr. Al Mujahed, Dr. Aaron Costerson, Shannon Egley, Dr. Jonathan Gelbach, Dr. Nabil Hassan, Dr. Teresa Lynch, Dr. Brenda Mehta, um, Dr. Mark Miller, Dr. Sonia Arcott, Dr. Jenna Reagan, Dr. Jonathan Roberts, Dr. Gaurish Shwetekar, and Dr. Richard Tapping. Can we give them all a round of applause, please? For 10 years of service to UECAMP, we have Dr. Saura Bansal, Dr. Amy Christensen, Dr. Manu Nyanamani, Dr. Mark Knapp, Dr. John Vazanelik, and Dr. Eleonora Zakarian. Can we give them all a big round of applause? <laughs> For 15 years of service to the College of Medicine, Dr. Gregory Bloom, Dr. Daniel Fassett, Dr. Samuel McIntyre, and Dr. Krishna Kumar Viravali. For 20 years of service to UE Camp, Dr. Richard Anderson, Dr. Luz Delgado Serrano, Dr. Eric Elwood, and Dr. Jacqueline Fisher. So thank you for your years of service. For 25 years of service, we recognize Dr. Hore Kata, the Chair of uh, Department of Neurology. For 30 years of service, Dr. Terence Brady and Dr. Denise Mamalito. And for 35 years of service, Dr. Megbul Ali and Dr. Jack Gibson. So can we give them all a few times? So with that, we, this program comes to an end. I once again want to take this uh, moment to thank all of you for being here, and thank you all for what you do to really advance the mission of UECOM, um, to train the next generation of physicians, provide outstanding clinical care, advance research, and really be an important member and do strong community service and engagement. So thank you all for everything that you do. There's lots of food, so please finish up the food um, and just stay back and mingle and have a conversation. And again, thank you all, and thanks for being here. Have a great evening.